welcome kindred spirits to a place of positivity, passion, and purpose. Greetings, viewers. Get ready to immerse yourself in the world of Palladium New York City in this video. Palladium. The Palladium originally called the Academy of Music was a movie theater, concert hall, and finally nightclub in New York City. It was located on the south side of East 14th Street, between Irving Place and 3rd Avenue. Designed by Thomas W. Lamb, it was built in 1927 across the street from the site of the original Academy of Music established by financier Moses H. Grinnell in 1852. Opened as a deluxe movie palace by movie mogul William Fox, the Academy operated as a cinema through the early years. Beginning in the years, it was also utilized as a rock concert venue, particularly following the June 1971 closure of the Fillmore East. It was rechristened the Palladium on September 18, 1976, with the band live radio broadcast, and continued to serve as a concert hall into the following decade. In 1985, the Palladium was converted into a nightclub by Steve Rubel and Ian Schrager, after their success with Studio 54. Japanese architect Arto Sozaki redesigned the building's interior for the club. Peter Gatin owned and operated the club from 1992 until 1997. The Palladium closed in August 1997 following its purchase by New York University. In August 1998, the building was demolished in order to build a 12-story residence hall that students affectionately referred to as Palladium Hall. The residence hall typically houses 960 residents, primarily sophomores with approximately 120 MBA students. Two floors in the basement and sub-basement house the Palladium Athletic Facility. As we progress, let's shine a spotlight on music venue and examine its intricate interplay within our topic. The Academy of Music opened as a movie palace at 126 East 14th Street. By the years, it had become a music venue for rock and roll acts. Seating 3,400, it was popular with both mainstream bands and upcoming acts which could open a major bill. Many bands performed at the Palladium in the middle of large arena and stadium tours, due to the prestige of the theatre and the excellent acoustics. The theatre featured a highly regarded sound system that was designed and installed by Richard Long of Richard Long and Associates RLA. Among the numerous rock concerts the Academy of Music hosted were the Rolling Stones, which played this venue on May 1, 1965, the Allman Brothers Band on August 15, 1971, Aerosmith's first concerts outside of New England, opening for Humble Pie and Igor Winter's White Trash on December 2 and 3, 1971, and the series of New Year's shows played by the band on December 1971 recordings from which were released as the 1972 live album Rock of Ages. New Year's Eve 1973 featured the eclectic line up of Bluist Occult, Iggy Pop, Kiss, and Teenage Lust which have recently backed up John Lennon. Genesis performed their NY concerts of The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway there in 1974 and Renaissance performed there on May 17, 1974. The show featured Andy Powell of Wishbone Ash on guitar, and bootleg recordings are widely available. The Grateful Dead played to extended stands at this venue. One was seven shows at the Academy of Music from March, 1972. Excerpts of these shows, including some tracks with Bo Diddley as a guest, were officially released on Dick's Picks Volume 30 and Dave's Picks Volume 14. The other was five shows between April 29 and May 4, 1977. The complete April 30 show was officially released as Grateful Dead Download Series Volume 1, with three bonus tracks from the April 29 show. Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band played six shows at the Palladium in October and November 1976, and three more in September 1978. Tickets for all three 1978 shows were sold out. 
Frank Zappa and his band performed on and around Halloween several times, including performances in 1977, which were included in the film Baby Snakes, a legendary series of shows in 1978, and a 1981 performance which was simulcast live on radio and MTV. New York proto-punk musicians The Patti Smith Group, John Cale, and television performed at the Palladium on New Year's Eve 1976. The Bay City Rollers performed at the Palladium on January 8, 1977. A performance of the Ramans was recorded at the Palladium on January 7, 1978, and they returned for New Year's Eve 1979. The police during their Regatta de Blanc World Tour 1979-80 played on November 29th. 1979. Kiss played a warm-up show here, in 1980, before they kicked off their Unmasked tour in Italy. It was Eric Carr's first live performance with the band. In 1991, Tin Machine performed at the venue during their It's My Life tour on November 27 and 29. A portion of these performances were used for their live album Tin Machine Live, Oy Vey, Baby, Blondie. Fresh from their first European tour, performed songs from the Blondie and Paramel Lines albums on May 4, 1978. Deborah Harry wore a long sleeve red shirt with pink panties and red thigh high boots. Rockabilly legend Robert Gordon, along with master guitarist Link Ray, opened the evening performing classic songs from the likes of Elvis Presley, Bruce Springsteen, Gene Vincent, Eddie Cochran, among others. On July 25, 1980, KISS played the venue, their only North American concert in 1980, to introduce new drummer Eric Carr to the American press before heading overseas for their Unmasked tour. Also part of the reason for having the concert was to help subsidize the rental of the Palladium for tour rehearsals with Carr. The venue was also where many British heavy metal acts made their initial impact in the United States in the late years and early years including Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Diff Leppard, Ozzy Osbourne, Humble Pie, and other participants of the so-called new wave of British heavy metal. The classic line-up of Matahid, with fast Eddie Clark on guitar, performed its final show at the Palladium on May 14, 1982. Many UK punk and new wave acts made their New York debuts at their Academy of Music, including The Clash, The Jam, The Boomtown Rats, The Fall, Graham Parker and The Rumor, Rockpile, Boo, Duran Duran, The Undertones, and Roxy Music. American punk bands The Ramans, Blondie, and The Cramps also played there in the late 70s. Chuck Berry played a New Year's Eve concert on December 31, 1988 recorded by WNEWFM and available as Chuck Berry Live at Palladium Theatre, New York, WNEWFM broadcast, 31st December 1988. Argentine rock bands Los Fabuosos, Cadillacs and Soda Stereo performed at the Palladium on September 25, 1995 and March 4, 1996 respectively. The final concert held at Palladium was a sold-out performance by Fugazi on May 1, 1997. In the upcoming section, we'll be dissecting recordings and exploring its intricate connections to our topic. The version of Nantucket Sly Ride Heard on Mountains Live, The Road Goes Ever On album at was recorded during their Academy of Music performance on December 14, 1971. On December 21, 1973, Lou Reed recorded both Rock and Roll Animal and Lou Reed Live at Howard Stein's Academy of Music, released during February 1974 and March 1975 respectively, featuring songs from his solo career and The Velvet Underground. Zappa in New York is a live double album by Frank Zappa recorded during a series of concerts at the Palladium in December 1976. Levenhelm and the RCO All-Stars recorded live at the Palladium NYC, New Year's Eve 1977. The CD album, released in March 2006, features over one hour of blues rock music performed by a star-studded ensemble featuring Levenhelm drums of vocals, Dr. John Kaiser vocals, Paul Butterfield harmonica vocals, 
Fred Carter guitar vocals, Donald Duck Dunn bass, Steve Cropper guitar, Lou Marini saxophones, Howard Johnson tuba baritone sax, Tom Bones Malone trombone, and Alan Rubin trumpet. The Clash played at the Palladium on September 20 and 21, 1979, as a part of their US tour and the iconic photo from the September 20 show of Paul Simon in smashing his bass would later be used for the front cover of the Clash album London Calling. Irish punk band The Undertones and American soul legends Sam and Dave were the opening acts for the shows. Bootleg recordings of both performances have surfaced, even recording the moment Simon and smashed his bass during the September 20 show. The photograph on the back of the Cramps' original 1979 debut EP, Gravist Hits, was taken at the Palladium. Renaissance recorded Unplugged Live at the Academy of Music at the venue in 1985, although it wasn't released until 2000. In 1992, the Music Factory recorded a song under the moniker S-O-U-L-S-Y-S-T-M for the soundtrack to The Bodyguard starring Whitney Houston and Kevin Costner. The song, It's Gonna Be a Lovely Day, was the only song on the soundtrack performed by an artist other than Whitney Houston to be released as a single in the US. The remixes of the song, which were released via Arista Records on compact disc single, cassette single, and double 12 vinyl single, were titled The Palladium House Anthem I and The Palladium House Anthem II. At that time, Music Factory member Robert Clivels was the resident DJ at The Palladium. In 2004, punk pioneers The Ramans reissued a live album they recorded at the Palladium. The album is called Live January 7, 1978 at the Palladium, NYC, and was released by Sanctuary Records Group. Club MTV, a live day program, was also filmed there in the Urs and Early Urs and starred downtown Dewey Brown. Now, we shift our focus to nightclub a topic that deserves our attention. The Palladium was converted from a music venue into a nightclub by former Studio 54 owners Steve Rubel and Ian Schrager. They hired dancer Terry DJ Richard Swirt, DJ Patrick Onostossi and DJ Luis Martinez who saw the possibility of a much larger audience for a downtown new wave music, Euro and house music oriented club. Designed by architect Art Sozaki, the Palladium featured commissioned artworks by artists such as Keith Herring. Jean-Michel Basquiat, and Francesca Clemente. Basquiat's mule was in a bar called the Mike Todd Room, Clemente's mule was in a stairwell, and Herring's mule was behind the dance floor. From its celebrity-studded opening in May 1985, the Palladium was one of the major features of the vibrant New York club scene. In September 1985, as Edin Alea's fashion show was held at the Palladium, the club was a mainstay on the New York club scene until it was bought out in 1997 by New York University NYU and demolished for a campus housing project. Junior Vasquez's Arena Party held Saturday nights and Sunday mornings at Palladium between September 1996 and September 1997 was one of the most popular parties in the New York club scene at the time. Although the promoters billed Arena as the gay man's pleasure dome, the party drew an eclectic mix of gay and straight from Manhattan and far beyond. Vasquez commemorated Arena in the titles of the remixes he produced that year. Share this video with your friends and spread the knowledge.